Hello, everyone. I'm not sure. I, I can't see myself, so I'm assuming you are able to see me. Uh, welcome to the last session of our Deep Tech Innovation Week. We had an amazing set of sessions till, till now. We started with Industry 4.0. Day two was FinTech. Day three was Cloud Identity and Management. And today our focus has been on cybersecurity. We started our, our day with an amazing panel discussion, joined by senior executives from the IT and the security world. We had the CIO of Costa, CISO of 118118 Money, a fintech lending company out of UK, and also the, the CISO of PayU Finance, a fintech, uh, fintech payment company out of India. They discussed two main things. One, they spoke about that we are, as a, as a global, you know, uh, uh, globally, we are always in conflict. We are always in crisis. We are always, always moving from one challenge to the other challenge. And of course, it was a big, big problem for, for the cybersecurity professionals and leadership to manage stakeholders, to continue to do business, to, to manage costs, and but at the same time, defend themselves against various attacks. They spoke about two areas. One, how do we use zero trust framework to, to possibly say that trust nobody and always verify? We saw that session just before this session of how Block Armor is able to provide that framework uh, and they presented a case study, uh, you know, joined by a senior leadership, a security, cybersecurity leadership from an Indonesian telecom company. The second area that the panel panelists spoke about is specifically on the conflict, the Ukraine-Russia conflict, and how it has been it has been played out not only in the physical world, but also in the cyber world. The threat actors, the dark web the areas that each of these countries are trying to get over one another, that one is attacking a country, the other is defending its, its, uh, its assets. It's a fascinating battle. While we have seen this battle taking up uh, different shapes and forms in the physical world, it's the same thing happening in the cyber world as well. And today we are going to speak about it. We're going to show you certain findings of, from, our, uh, uh, from our portfolio company, which is monitoring the dark web on a real-time basis. They will show you from a timeline standpoint of how things have moved over the last 15, 20 days and how cyber attacks have really increased, how the cyber attacks have moved from, from, uh, from specific enterprises to, 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 to big government establishments. These findings, are, are obviously uh, massively, while it is, they are fascinating, but the other side, the, you know, it, it opens up a massive area of concern. Is there a way for us to defend ourselves in the cyber world? Let's hear from Cybel, a platform, a company that is in the news over the last one year. This company, of course, has, you know, was founded only two years back. But now, with, with their ability to do threat intelligence in the dark web, they are able to find things that you and I on the surface web can't find. I would request the speaker from Cybel, senior analyst and, and research, uh, uh, research professional from Cybel to join me today. Dhanalakshmi, thank you for joining in. Dhanalakshmi, of course, comes from a very wide range of uh, of of experience uh, in the cyber in the cyber security world, uh, looking at various aspects of intelligence, dark web intelligence, threat actors analysis, and and does a lot of research around it. And today we are going to hear what she and her team is constantly constantly finding with regards to the cyber threat uh, and the cyber warfare that is currently going on between Russia and Ukraine. Then, Lakshmi, welcome to this stage. Over to you. Thanks, Sandy.
Hi. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today in our uh, session. Uh, today, we are going to discuss a topic that has been dominating the headline for past few weeks. Yes, the Russia-Ukraine conflict. While this physical military conflict was started in late February, a more subtle warfare that is not as tangible as the war, uh, was, uh, tangible as missiles or bombs, but that can have the similar adverse impact on nation states. Yes, we are talking about the cyber warfare that has been ongoing between Russia, Russia and Ukraine. In our today's discussion on Russia-Ukraine conflicts and its impact on cyberspace, we'll be covering outbreak of cyber warfare, various threat activities and its sectoral impacts, and ongoing uh, various threat actors orientation between these nations, target attacks on critical infrastructures. Then we will be discussing about the different sanctions on Russia and their impact on IT-enabled services. Then moving on with the activities which are influencing the cyber security, uh, cyber strategies. And finally, we'll be discussing about the R predictions and implications of cyber warfare between Russia and Ukraine. Let's move on with what happened. Basically, a full-fledged cyber warfare has broken out between Russia and Ukraine. Massive cyber attacks have been launched against Ukrainian banks and government websites by Russia on February 24th. Later on February 27th, Ukrainian government, assisted by the certain pro-Ukrainian actors, launched their own strike in retaliation to cyber warfare against the Russian state actors. In our today's presentation, we will uh, we will uh, go in detail about uh, various cyber threat activities and their timeline. As we see in our presentation, uh, like this uh, cyber warfare was started uh, like much before the actual war outbreak between Russia and Ukraine. On January 13th, uh, the uh, destructive malware called Whispergut has been identified targeting Ukrainian organization. On the very next day, the another uh, malware family, which is called uh, uh, Cyclops, blinks again targeting Ukrainian systems and networks. Later on, on January uh, 19th, uh, the well-known APT group, which is called Primitive VR APT or Gimeridian groups, started again targeting Ukrainian uh, Ukrainian organizations with its uh, with its uh, enhanced tool sets and malwares. And the outbreak actually happened with the series of DDoS attack against Ukrainian banking and government infrastructure, which was carried out on February 15th. Then later on, along with this threat activities and DDoS attacks, even threat actors started targeting Ukrainian uh, organizations like uh, Kasida has announced the defacement attack will be carried out on 22nd February against Ukraine. Then later on, the notorious threat actor who is named NETSEC started targeting US defense organization, which includes DTIC, TRADAC, SOCOE, etc. Moving on, we, we can see uh, now the escalations of cyber attacks after the outbreak of full-fledged war between Russia and Ukraine on Feb 22nd. During the February 23rd, uh, even the another destructive malware, which is named as Hermastic Viper, target discovered Ukrainian infrastructures such as websites, banks, and government entities, etc. On the same time, the redactor pre civilian climbed to deface Ministry of Internal Affairs of uh, Ukraine. Later on, on the very next day, the NETSEC climbed to compromise uh, program, uh, software program managed and developed by US Army. At the same time, the data set of 90K PII records belonging to undisclosed US intelligence agency was leaked by data for actor named data for. Then in, in Feb 25, Again, NETSEC released an email and encrypted passwords allegedly belongs to FSB and Lockheed Martin corporations. 
enhanced with this thread actors the well known ransomware group called conti ransomware announces on the same time uh, like they are targeting the russian russian government during february 26 2022 ukraine started its retaliatory attack against russia by forming the telegram channel which is called it army of ukraine then followed by multiple threat actors such as against the west kelvin sec network uh, battalion 65 started uh, uh, targeting uh, russians as part of retaliatory actions these are all the attacks we have seen uh, ongoing attacks which was observed in late feb 28 uh, late in february and beginning of march in continuation of these uh, attacks uh, uh, march 2nd the the notorious ransomware group which is called stromus ransomware group announces their support to russia in targeting ukraine and its supportive or uh, friendly nations such as us and other countries and then in march 3rd and march 4th there will be like uh, multiple attacks carried out by these ransomware groups as well as threat actors on uh, against ukraine as well as us based uh, mft automations we still observe the ongoing cyber warfare between uh, russia and ukraine based on our analytics on affected organizations uh, from ukraine us and russia uh, we observe that the uh, the prominent uh, sector which has been impacted by the cyber warfare between russia and uh, ukraine is government sector with 48 percentage and then followed by information technologies was the second most targeted or impacted organizations with 24 percentage and then financial institutions and manufacturing institutions are with 12 percentage and we did observe a small portion of attacks towards energy sector as the cyber warfare escalated several high profile ts were aligned with these both of these nations and started participating in the cyber warfare the threat actors such as against the west spectre kelvin security team network battalion 65 and on host and other anonymous collectives were in were aligned with ukraine and uh, carried out the retaliatory attacks cyber attacks against russia and the actors who were aligned with russia are kazida netsec free civilian conti ransomware group and stromus ransomware group as we see in the screenshot the one of the prominent uh, threat actor who is named netsec also known as carfac who has been like uh, circulating uh, and uh, targeting and uh, breaching multiple uh, organizations and government sectors in ukraine as well as its supporting nations like us army forces on the other hand against the west uh, helping ukrainian uh, ukrainian government uh, in the retaliatory cyber attack against russia and Uh, the one most uh, prominent uh, ransomware groups such as conti and stromus ransomware groups has issued a warning stating that they are in uh, aligned with uh, russia and they are uh, targeting multiple organizations and uh, government sectors in ukraine as well as russia so along with this uh, cyber attacks and apt attacks as well as threat actor attacks we have also evidenced uh, targeted attacks on critical infrastructure during late feb as well as uh, starting of march so this critical infrastructure attacks <clears throat> started from 25th february uh, targeting the gasprom one of the oil and uh, oil and gas supplier in russia and followed by belarus railway got hacked and then uh, the ev station near moscow also got hacked and and then there are multiple leaks which is related to nica and jinr scada compromises lately we observed uh, the uh, targeted uh, hack on uh, the uh, water supply of uh, russian russian water supply system
Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dhanalakshmi. We will request uh, the audience to uh, to go through a poll. Uh, Dhanalakshmi, if you can keep your uh, keep your slides back, please. Uh, it's it's fascinating information that you've been sharing till now. Uh, of course, what we see is a massive amount of cyber warfare going on uh, between the two countries. Uh, uh, so, you know, as we as we go through the information and process this information, I'm sure you right now showing things which are till uh, fifth of March. And hey, you know, I know that you have a real time platform that is looking at the dark web on a regular basis. Uh, so, so while while what you're showing uh, is just is, is a few days back the information, I would assume that it got escalated massively over the last 10 days as well. But till the time that happens, uh, uh, if you can just put, yeah, put that presentation on. Uh, we've requested the audience for a quick, uh, quick poll. Uh, look at how do you really respond in case of attacks on industrial control systems, right? Because that's the, uh, that's how, you know, uh, that's that's the critical asset that the government owns. Uh, most of them, actually, every person, hundred percent of the votes says just follow the guidelines by government and international regulatory bodies. <clears throat> basically, basically, the audience is saying we got to be waiting. We got to be waiting for the for the government to tell us what to do. I think that's the answer that uh, that people are people are responding to. Uh, let me tell you, I'm quite surprised, uh, and this also gives me, uh, 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 you know, surprises me and scares me a bit, because if you've not built redundancies, if you've not built safeguards as an enterprise, as an establishment against your critical assets, then it's a massive challenge. You've got to have real time, uh, real time information in your hand of what's happening about your digital assets on various platforms and. What are vulnerable assets for you? Needs to be protected by you, and not only wait for the government uh, government uh, uh, guidelines. Uh, am I right, Lakshmi? Yes, Sandeep. Yeah. Awesome. So we will we will go through this. Uh, we'll process this information, but handing it over back to you for uh, for the next uh, information sharing, uh, Lakshmi. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you, Sandeep. So as a response, we have discussed about the various attacks and APT uh, attacks as well as uh, threat actor attacks. Uh, as a response to this conflict, uh, Western nations have imposed heavy financial sanctions on Russia. Let us discuss these uh, sanctions and their impact and what we can expect to see as a result of going forward. Right? Uh, Russian banks have been excluded from using UK financial system. Then, Russian banks were also being banned using international financial messaging systems uh, system, which is called SWIFT, leading to uh, the surge in cryptocurrency. And uh, Russia has also been suspended from central bank organizations. And uh, on top of all of this, uh, this uh, uh, advisory effect to this big four subsidiaries such as Deloitte, KPMG, EY, and PwC have exited from Russia. So we suspect Russia may look into develop its own payment banking infrastructure with the help of their supporting nations. And uh, we also expect there will be search in VPN service usage for elite as well as legit purpose in the Russia, in Russia. Basically, its internet services also been banned. So we uh, expected search in VPN services and usage. And we anticipate the increase in supply chain attacks on the global organizations based out of Russia and Ukraine. And as the cybersecurity industry observed the changes in threat landscape that reflects increase in destructive malware, which has caused explosion in steel mills and gas pipelines. If this goes unchecked, it will be result in wider global impact which was evidenced during uh, the 2017 Nopetia cyber attack. And uh, activities influencing cyber strategies. Okay, how do firms change their cyber security strategy to adapt to and full fledged cyber warfare? Yes, they can do it. 
by continuous monitoring of the threat actors and their activities for early warning and prevention. And this can be achieved by implementing and use of robust threat intelligence model or platform, which has proven dark web intelligence along with the threat intel uh, along with the malware intelligence. Sandy, over to you. Yes, thank you, Dhanlakshmi. Um, another poll question coming up for the team, for the audience here. I request the team to poll, uh, publish the poll, please. Thank you. So, uh, so guys, this is this is an this is a massive uh, issue. Of course, um, we want to understand how are you as and your organization adapting to the strategy in light of this conflict. Uh, as we saw, there is massive amount of cyber warfare going on between the two states. The issue is not about this crisis alone. I'm sure what we are trying to trying to mention is it's it's also about how do we safeguard from another crisis? Another crisis just down the corner, I'm sure, because there is we are going through one challenge over the other, one problems over the other, uh, one crisis over the other, and 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 we cannot be waiting for for someone else to let us know what needs to be done so uh, so the question is how do you how do you take this in your account and uh, work towards uh, work towards adapting a strategy uh, and the and the answer of course that we are getting from the majority of the audience in lakshmi is reconfiguring mm -hmm. our security posture uh, is... thirty percent of them have have of course limited the interactions with certain IPs and vendors and clients. Mm -hmm. But I would assume the reason why they have done only with uh, only thirty three percent of them have been able to do it because of transparency. They don't know which ones to limit, which ones mm -hmm. to limit. It's important for you to also have access and information about which are my supply chain vendors, which are my third party contractors, which are my third party uh, you know the the external external uh, 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 companies that we are dealing with as an organization whether they are in ukraine or in russia and how do we limit ourselves you know with interactions with those companies it's a tough job because if you Absolutely. don't know if you don't know which ones to which ones to limit then there's a problem right uh, so, so that's that's the that's the answers that we're getting from uh, from this uh, from this audience, quite a learned audience, I, may, I might say, uh, in this in this case that they are reconfiguring quickly their security posture per se. Absolutely right. Over to, over to you, Dhan Lakshmi. Thanks, Sandy. Then, lastly, we are going to discuss about our predictions and implications of the cyber warfare. We foresee there will be increase in cybercrime activities, especially by state-backed actors. And there will be larger upticks in ransomware attacks, possibly focused on supply chains. And uh, the state-backed threat actors will be in incentivized to gather the cyber currency assets. I mean, cryptocurrency assets. There will be uh, like a surge, uh, surge in critical infrastructure attack targeted exploit and phishing attacks worldwide and we suspect and uh, there will be a cyber attack spillover uh, to the global community similar to there might be uh, the cyber uh, cyber attacks spillover to the global community similar to 2017 no, no petty attack we at cyber research Researchers at Cyber Labs are continuously monitoring the cyberspace to uncover the latest cyber incidents in light of ongoing geopolitical crisis. And a cyber uh, platform, which is called Cyber Vision, will, which provides the detailed uh, Intel uh, dark web on dark web and deep web and uh, surface web as well. And uh, please go through our website, cyber.com, to, to know more about Cyberland, its products and its offering. Thank you.
Thank you, Dhan Lakshmi. Thank you for this insights. Uh, as as we had mentioned earlier, if you can just bring down the bring down the slides. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, you know, we, we are expecting certain questions to come in from the audience. Uh, of course, I, I will I will I will you know uh, ask you to respond on those. But as I mentioned earlier, fascinating topic, uh, very very dynamic as well. And I'm sure your platform is looking at threat intelligence on a real-time basis. So what is available from, from your platform is for organizations to, on a real-time basis, check what are their digital assets getting uh, getting exposed in the dark web. And of course, mm -hmm. take corrective actions based on that. Uh, <clears throat> there's a question that has been asked, uh, who, according to your data, has an upper hand in this cyber war between Ukraine and Russia. So it is it is a trivial question to answer, but uh, as per my, our understanding, like uh, the cyber warfare has been initiated by Russia, but as a retaliatory action, Ukraine started uh, tar attacking back them on the cyber warfare. It's both the hands of like. Uh, they were they were enhanced and participating in the cyber warfare continuously. It's still ongoing cyber warfare. Right, right. And I don't think there is, you know, uh, as much as I understand cyber uh, cyberspace now, uh, it's an ever evolving uh, change, right? I mean, one company, one person, one one threat actor may have an upper hand right now, but there will be someone else who can have the upper hand uh, upper hand in the next one hour or two hours depending on what they're targeting uh, and things like that and in in a war situation you're not targeting one company you're not targeting one institution you're actually targeting a multitude of institutions and and, and establishments uh, and depending on whether your defense mechanism is good enough as an institution uh, and are you able to take uh, you know, very, very, uh, you know, uh, immediate actions, and we are agile in making the making decisions. Mm -hmm. You could you could safeguard yourself, but in a warlike situation, I don't think anyone can have an upper hand uh, today or to, you know, it is it's ever changing as a as a situation. Absolutely but yeah, it's a good right. point. Uh, it's 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 a, it's, a, it's a good point to uh, you know, as we see, as you rightly said, there is of course uh, Russia started it all way back in January, while while the physical action uh, actually happened in late Feb, uh, it was 45 days before when they started off uh, these attacks uh, on the Ukraine establishment. So that's fascinating, uh, fascinating to know. Fantastic. Uh, uh, then, Lakshmi, you know, from your platform standpoint, uh, you know, how does your platform really, uh, really make a difference because if I am an if I am in part you know part of this establishment whether I'm in Russia or Ukraine, uh, mm -hmm. can I use this platform on a real time basis and check what are my digital assets exposed and can I take corrective action on an immediate basis or I have to wait for things to things to cool down? No, uh, yes, uh, Sandy, uh, uh, our uh, platform Cyber Vision, which is focused on uh, from surface to deep dark intel, and which provides the uh, digital risk posture of any organization starting from dark deep web on a real time basis, and their exposures on the surface web as well. And based on our inputs from uh, uh, from Cyber Vision platform, you can able to like make a decision immediately as soon as you receive the intel from us, which includes uh, uh, the actor, the actor intelligence as well as like uh, your security posture of your organization, uh, with uh, along with the actionable intelligence, which can help uh, to change the organization security posture immediately and uh, safeguard your assets from the cyber attacks. Got it. Got it. Uh, there's another question, which is from 5th of March, where the data is not currently shown. How is it going for Ukraine as well as facing the attack? Sorry, could you please repeat the question, Sandy? Yeah. So how is it? How is how is Ukraine responding over the last 10 days? Because your data uh, is till 5th of March. So we you know, you've not seen the last yes, 10, 15, yes. 10, 12 days. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So uh, post March 5th, yes, there is there has been like multiple uh, malware attacks, even cyber attacks carried out between 
Russia and Ukraine. Even Ukraine is responding back to Russian attacks. Uh, and we are capturing those uh, attacks on real time and we will be like releasing uh, our, our write-ups on community on a uh, regular basis. So it is still ongoing. Uh, it is yeah. as, as similar to as uh, in the starting of March. So I guess this is, uh, you know, and, and we spoke the, spoke about this uh, in the backstage. I think it looks like that the war, the, the way the physical war is going is the same way the cyber war is also going on, right? Um, it, 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 it is mirroring the situation on the ground uh, in the cyber space. Uh, that is that is quite amazing because there's no one who's winning the war yet. I mean, no one's, no, you know, while Ukraine is defending extremely well, uh, physically, Ukraine is also defending itself well in the in the cyberspace. Uh, on the other side, Russia seems to be quite relentless, uh, both in the physical space as well as in the in the cyberspace. Yes. So it's uh, it's quite right. quite an amazing thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a question. And there's a question coming. Yeah, please go ahead. Yes. Moreover, uh, moreover, when it comes to the critical infrastructure attack, right, that will help them to like. Uh, delay in terms of like delivering the troops in the borders and which is again like on the other hand back end it is helping the nations to fight in the real warfare as well sure 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 <laughs> the question uh, coming in how do you check security posture of an organization so we <laughs> have regarding the security posture of the organization uh, our brand production uh, we'll check for their asset exposures across the internet with the vulnerabilities and in case if there is some infringement to their domains etc and uh, in uh, through our dark and deep web intelligence uh, we do like continuously scan and monitor the dark and deep web to identify their exposures like uh, data leaks and breaches etc sure Sure. Yeah, and I've seen, I've, I've also seen the platform, and it's just fascinating because you basically are, uh, you know, going into the, as we say, right? I mean, uh, if you want to have any information on a real time basis, uh, you you Google it on the surface web. Uh, we we cyber it on on the dark web, right? uh, because you've you've indexed, you've indexed indexed the m massive portions of the dark web, which is not a which is not an easy thing to do. Indexing the dark web is not easy. You know, having having access to some of the cybercrime forums is not easy. And and you know what you are basically presenting uh, is real time information, though it is not as real time for the audience as we see it right now, uh, because we 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 actually couldn't show real time information as things are evolving. Uh, that's why we've taken a cut off of the fifth of March. But the whole idea was to present to the audience that. It doesn't start now, you know. If you do not, if you do not, uh, do not uh, uh, monitor the dark web for our assets, for our digital assets, whether it's our PII information, whether it's our company's digital information, if you do not do it on a real-time basis and a long, for a long-term basis, it is close to impossible for us to protect ourselves. Which is uh, which is quite uh, which is quite uh, quite amazing uh, quite amazing than Lakshmi. I'm uh, than Lakshmi. Uh, we we are getting a few questions more, but I'm going to you know because of paucity of time, I'm going to uh, you know conclude the session today. Uh, thank you very much for your insights. Uh, I will request the audience to continuously monitor and go through your website. The the, the information that you guys are sharing about various attacks and conflicts that are going on and how it is impacting the cyber cyber crime forums. Uh, uh, amazing information that you guys share. So, uh, so requesting the audience to also go in and check on that. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Anil. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dhanalakshmi. Guys, thank you very much. Uh, this, this brings us to an end of our Deep Tech Innovation Week. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the last four days. It was it was an honor for me personally, and I'm sure for the entire team at Network Science to host you all across multiple platforms that we've gone live with. We were live not only on this platform, we were also live on LinkedIn. A lot of you joined us on LinkedIn for all the sessions. As we started the week, we are working towards changing the world with deep tech innovation. 
our belief is deep tech has the ability to bring in significant impact and change in bring in participating towards our three big purposes one we want an inclusive society two we want to have a net zero environment and number 3 we want to help our industries and enterprises to transform themselves in working towards these core objectives we believe that deep tech has the ability to do it and as organizations innovate in implementing deep tech to meet these three purposes we would be partners with these organizations in their innovation journey this week was couldn't have been possible without the support of our portfolio companies you saw 10 of our portfolio companies presenting their unique and pioneering solutions so thank you very much for our portfolio companies for participating and presenting their ideas to the audience this would also not been possible without the support of you as audience who who you know registered for this event who participated through the polls asked a lot of questions and interacted with us through multiple ways and multiple forums so thank you very much for for coming in and participating uh, and openly interacting with us last but not the least i would like to say thank you to to the entire team at network science and if if they are if they are available if i may call them on stage back today please uh, all of you guys mansi aishwarya monish lena anyone else backstage it's us fantastic is lena i can't see lena there is she able to make it thank you very much guys thank you very much for joining in and uh, this is the team that made it happen mansi aishwarya monish lena thank you very much for all the support i know this is not only four days for me it has been last four days but for you it has been possibly last two months so thank you very much for all your help all your support it was brilliant to have you on our side making this happen this wouldn't have been possible without you thank you very much any 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 concluding words from you guys mansi mansi has a lot to say i'm sure <laughs> yes <laughs> we started off with the you know deep tech innovation one i remember that was just a one month prep that we did and the response that we got that's when we decided to go ahead with the second one and i think the next time is going to be much bigger much better of so we have fingers crossed for that of course of course aishwarya this is the first time for you with network science yes it was amazing working with the team initially yes i was a little lost but we were right on track all along for innovation week 2 so yeah yeah awesome Awesome, Monish. Again, for you, it's been the first time. Yes, first time for me as well. I was really excited to be a part of this event. I've heard a lot of what happened in the first session, first time when this happened, and being a part of this was amazing. Absolutely, and and of course, don't don't mute yourself. You you know, it's Lena. We want we have to hear from Lena, right? right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course, of course. Sandy I think uh, this innovation week was bang on with amazing leaders speakers you and the rest of the team uh, and I'm sure that the next will be even better <laughs> No absolutely I think Bigger than this. I think this yeah I mean I'm I, I'm incredibly proud of the of the work that you guys have put together and it's not only you I'm sure there are so many others uh, the Zadul team uh, the the you know various various other external partners who come together to make this all happen so a big thank you to all of them as well a big thank you to all the other network scientists who have supported us all throughout uh, they've all worked very hard uh, this is this is an event that i'm incredibly proud of what we bring on the table is very unique and pioneering way it's not easy to do four days event it's not easy it's not easy to bring in some amazing sets of panel members 
if you look if you just put together all the panelist panelists you will see some real amazing uh, firepower out there so it's not easy to put all of that together and give everyone a very seamless experience thank you once again thank you friends for joining in we will see you back on the version 3 of deep tech innovation week very soon thank you <laughs>